Madam President, just one, one note for everyone is that your microphones have been reprogrammed, so when you push to talk, it, it will stay on until you push it off. And it'll, okay, but you need to be cognizant of that because only so many microphones will work at one time. Hello. Testing. Uh, the, com <coughs> the Committee of the Whole will come to order. Uh, Madam Clerk, will you call the roll, please? Mr. Jones? Present. Ms. Conley? Here. Mr. Rogers? Here. Ms. Simon? <coughs> Mr. Greenspan? Mr. Miller? Present. Mr. Brady? Present. Mr. Germana? Present. Mr. Edgar? Mr. Schron? Here. Ms. Conwell? Here. Madam President, there is a quorum. Uh, thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, we are here uh, for the purpose of um, continuing the confirmation hearings of Gerald First, Clerk of Courts. Um, at the conclusion of our session um, last Thursday, um, we had some additional questions of Mr. First, and Mr. First has been gracious enough to join us this afternoon. And um, uh, do we start with, we have some questions. I know Mr. Greenspan had a question and some other persons. Uh, so you want to identify yourself in terms of those who have additional questions? Yes, Mr. Schron. Oh, going down the list. No, go ahead. Oh, <laughs> all right. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Thanks Councilman. for coming back again. Thank you. Um, in some of your study processes, you indicated that uh, you had some creative ways in which we could be using uh, the indigent defense uh, activities uh, here to address our needs within Cuyahoga County and uh, how that might yield some cost savings. Can you give me specifics as to what you see as a resolution of that and how that translates into dollars? Well, first of all, I think we're doing as much as we can right now with the resources we have. But I've read, read through the report and I see some uh, hope there that we can uh, increase our revenues. This isn't, um, well, this is what we're dealing with is money that's owed to the county. It's out there. It's a matter of getting it. And I think the um, transition team made some good recommendations uh, along that line. Uh, they looked particularly at the Texas situation, which uh, intrigued me a lot. Um, I think they're going to, uh, and I like the idea of having a, um, I'm trying to get the name of the uh, uh, person, but Norbert Myrtle uh, Cologne would be the uh, person who would bring the courts and the clerk together so that we could identify what really has to be done to step up those collections. Among them are uh, the uh, court uh, at the time of sentencing, uh, take a firm position on um, collect, uh, payment of those uh, monies and uh, have a system that uh, tightens it up. Uh, I think that having a individual like that who's a referee kind of would uh, decide what's the best way to go, and I'm for that all, all, uh, all I can be. I mean, it's, um, I think it's a very doable thing, and I support it. I'm sorry, but you used the word, I hope to this, and I desire this. Could, I, I'm looking for specifics that you say, if I do this, it should yield. I'm, I, and I'm not going to hold you to the dollars and cents as much as the concept to which you you think that this could work. And then also then you alluded in your answer about collection of, uh, of proceeds and how uh, the courts are not holding people accountable for the collection. Can you go through specifics as to how you would use uh, whatever tools you want to put in place to help improve those collections? Because these are areas that I think you've already addressed as being weak. Tell me what you do to fix them. Well, I think as far as monies, uh, I'd like, it's hard to put a dollar on it, but I think uh, I would look in terms of uh, percentages. And uh, we saw the percentage increase in Texas 
with the I ideas that they put into effect, and I, I would like to attain the same thing. That percentage is what? Is you 66 percent, as I recall. They moved up, I believe, from 36 percent to 66 percent. I, I have it in front of me. I've, I'm buried in notes and stats, but uh, I have it somewhere here. And it's in the, when we left uh, the meeting, it was about a two and a half hour meeting, uh, Councilman Greenspan was asking some questions and uh, they came from this uh, handout, which we weren't given. I, I didn't have it in front of me at the time. And as a result, I was uh, unable to uh, address his questions. Uh, it, it became apparent that we would have to go back and update those figures because he was asking a question based on figures that weren't complete for 2010, and we had to update them, which we did, and uh, gave them to Joe Nani, who emailed them to all the council members. And uh, it, it kind of answers the question, but you're, you're talking about criminal cost collection. We- uh, Yeah, you, you uh, it indicated, I believe, that there was not a comprehensive or a systematic a method for which cost collections would be done, or were being done in the county, and I'm looking for Specifics well, as to what you're going to do in, in uh, the next two years as you approach this job. Well, we'll we're going to have to have some help on it, and if we get that help, we'll work with it. Um, we're doing right now everything that the resources allow us to do. We're doing inmate collection. We're probably one of the few counties that, uh, well, we're a leader in that. There are some counties that don't even haven't collected dime one yet. We're helping, for example, Summit County, a large county, which hasn't even started that. We've already collected over $2 million since 2005 when we initiated it. Uh, our collect, we collect money, uh, is collected for us too by the probation department. Uh, they help us on that. We collect money from uh, at our window. We send out, we bill people. We tried a collection agent, I mentioned that last week, uh, and uh, the, uh, it, it looked like, you know, it would be a, a road to better collection, but actually the collection agency quit on us because they couldn't make headway to, to make it worthwhile for their uh, efforts. Uh, the problem there was we were, they were unable to uh, use social security numbers and uh, we got a, 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 um, an opinion from the prosecutor who we write, wrote to him twice, and he both times said it's not permissible that that impeded that. So um, I could go. I think I have the uh, sections I marked off, and there is a uh, – I hate to take up your time fumbling through these papers, but I have to do that too. So that's, uh, Madam President, if somebody else has another question, it, perhaps it will – come to you as you, uh, well, there's, as you there's, go through. There's a few pages there that it's just not a simple answer. But uh, I read through that and I like what I saw and I like to work with some of those ideas. But I think one of the keys to that is the, um, uh, I'm sorry again to delay you, but. It, um, it calls for a coordination uh, by the Deputy County Executive for Public Safety. That's on page 111. And uh, the executive uh, has appointed uh, Norberto Colon, but he's given him the title of Deputy Chief of Ju Justice, who would perform those uh, services. And uh, there and throughout that, it indicates different steps that can be taken, and I, I like the, I like it. 
and I like to work with Norberto, and I think, you know, uh, see better results. I wish I could get more detail on it, but Thank we, you. we got to sit down with him and uh, and uh, take it through. Uh, Ms. Conwell? I, I do have some sympathy with you on the sure. collection of, of fees, having dealt with it for over 20 years at municipal court. It, it's a tough area. Somebody's in jail, it's kind of hard to get money out of them. Uh, do we, we have additional questions? Mr. Greenspan, did you have questions? Yes, thank you, Madam President, to, to the clerk. I, um, I did receive the additional information as far as the, the number of uh, filings and um, the numbers that were presented basically said that you processed 165,000 cases in 60 days. I have nothing to doubt the information you gave me. I find the numbers to be a little a little tough, tough to swallow, but you, you presented the information in your testimony before this council. So I have, I have no further questions. That was really the outstanding issue that I had. I believe I answered, asked all my questions in our previous, in our previous meeting. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I, uh, in looking at those figures, there was a, um, a decrease. Uh, we figured out, um, I believe it was 8% in our filings. We don't know at the end of the year how that'll go. Next year they may go up, but we have a ballpark figure when we figure our budget. Uh, while we did have a decrease of 8%, uh, our legal salaries uh, were decreased by 13%. So. Uh, and uh, at the same time, there were some uh, efforts, some work that we do that wasn't included. For example, our, our expungements, the sealings of criminal records increased 11%. Garnishments increased 37%. That's all work we have to do. Okay, so. very good, thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions of Mr. Hurst? Ms. Uh, Simon? Thank you very much, Madam President and Clerk First. I, I want to make an, a, just a, a statement that our microphones now, we don't have to push down, but I've been practicing in, in the Cuyahoga County practice of law since I started out as a law clerk and have had the privilege to be at our county clerk's office for all those years. And I can attest that the office runs smoothly and efficiently and impressively and opposed to other clerk's offices uh, that I've actually had a practice in, there's a vast difference between the efficiency, the, the timeliness, and um, responsiveness from this office. So I, I want to say that from a practitioner as a lawyer, opposed to other clerk's offices. So I want to say that. But, but Mr. First, I have a question just with regard to your staffing. Yes. You run efficiently. Do you envision that this office can run as efficiently as it is today with a reduction of your staff in any particular department or place? And I apologize if that's been asked. It would be difficult. Uh, we're down right now uh, for employees, and um, I, the executive has told us and other agencies which have lost employees just to try to get by for a while because the... Uh, HR department is still getting itself on its feet. Um, unless there's a change in the workload, uh, I, I don't see it if the workload continues as it is. If we uh, get a mandate from the state, an unfunded mandate, uh, then we could uh, require more uh, assistance deputies. But at the same time, we're always looking at new technology, and that may result in a reduction of staff. Um, we've uh, at one time had a staff of 274, and it's down to a full-time employees. It's down to 230 plus 15 people that are not funded from the general revenue fund. The court has a uh, special project fund, which it raised the uh, filing fees and other fees related to mortgage uh, foreclosures and with that they have a fund and they've allowed and they pay allowed us to hire 15 deputies out of that so that 230 jumps up to 245 
and they can only work in impacted departments, in other words, those departments which are impacted by foreclosure actions. Summons, for example, journals, departments, and so forth. So uh, I hope that answers your question. We'll do the best we can. <laughs> Uh, Mr. First, speaking of your employees, now when they divide off the um, title bureau, yes. uh, how many people will that go to that other department? 85 right now. We were up at one time at 103. Uh, we um, uh, lost, we gave up our uh, Golden Gate office, which had 10 people in it. We didn't let those people go, but as we were involved in an early retirement uh, plan, we use them to fill in some of the vacancies created by the uh, people retiring under that plan. So that accounted for 10 of them. The rest of them just went down through uh, efficiency and uh, um, natural attrition. We, um, so you your staff will be reduced by 85 when that yeah, like, breaks For out. example, we had an index department over there, which indexed all. We don't have an index department. It's all automated now. So we didn't need the index department. So you find things like that. Are there any other questions of Mr. First? Mr. Gallagher. Uh, Mr. First, welcome back. Um, Thank you. I, I spent the weekend talking to uh, a number of my attorney friends who, fortunately or unfortunately, I have many of, and some, uh, and, and some, yeah. and some, thank you, Judge. <laughs> And, uh, and some judges that I can, I, I can uh, uh, back up with uh, what Councilman Simon was saying, that uh, everyone seems to be in agreement that the clerk's office is uh, running efficiently and is, and is really a pretty nice place to visit when, unfortunately, you have to. And the courts and the clerk's office are unique in that you really are the first line of defense as far as the public goes when they're coming in. They're going to, you know, you're the face of the county in many many respects. The only thing that, that continues to concern me is the inac inadequate funding for the employees. I really do have a problem with that, knowing personally how hard these people work. And having garnered the reputation that your office has garnered, at least with the general public, the professional public, and the judiciary, uh, I, I would certainly look for that to be addressed in the future, but I, I, I have to tell you that it is very disturbing to me the way in which the, the funding of the employees have gone, but that's, that's all I had to say. Thank you. Well, you're right, and I share your feelings on that, and it's not only the uh, salaries we pay, but the people are also doing furlough days, too, which makes it even worse. Our, we had a, um, the commissioners in 2000 or 2001 uh, authorized a DMG, I guess that's Archer now. It's a professional group. They came in and studied all our uh, jobs, job descriptions, uh, responsibilities of the job, and salaries. And they made a study and they came out with a study. It, it upgraded a number of salaries, changed some of the, uh, uh, like an entry level positions to a higher grade. Uh, some of the uh, titles had changed too. And so we are operating on their, what they uh, came up with. In other words, when we have a, a person moved up to a, a new position, we generally moved them in into the bottom of the salary. There's a salary range. Let's say it's 30 to 35,000, 30 to 40,000. We start them at the 30 because they're in a new position. They're a rookie in that position, and they get the lower salary as opposed to those who are presently working into it. But we're operating basically on what DMG said. Now the commissioners agreed that that uh, that has to be looked at again. But then we ran into the economy that we're faced with now, and instead of doing that, we've had cuts and uh, furloughs. So you're right. I feel the same way about that about the people, and uh, I'm very proud of them that they would hang on and keep working like they have been, in spite of the uh, fact that they have been working with those same salaries for a long time and, uh, uh, and having to give up part of it through furloughs. You're right. And a follow-up, madam. Yes. Uh, when do you anticipate uh, 
a uh, management position being uh, put back over in the appeals court satellite office for Al Chesney. All right, um, that's a posted position. And uh, we've done no posting since the economy has changed uh, eight, nine, ten. We have a lot of people out of position. We have them working temporarily in positions that they don't hold, but we got to get the work done. And uh, I might say, Al, you mentioned the date he died, and that was in July. And I know you were right as wake. You had a lot of respect for him, as we all did. But uh, he had uh, retired already in, I think it was August of 2009. And in that year, we had a lot of uh, cuts imposed on us by the uh, commissioners. And uh, his salary became part of the cut. Okay, nothing further. Uh, Mr. Greenspan. Yeah, Madam President, thank you to clerk first. I, I asked this question last week, and, and um, candidly, I wasn't satisfied with the answer I received. So I'm going to ask the question again. And you've been clerk for over 30 years, and you stated last week that you only intended to be in this position for two years. So my question then and, and is now, in the next 24 months, what do you hope to accomplish in 24 months that you weren't able to accomplish in 30 years? Well, I'd like to see a smooth transition and keep the office running smoothly as it has been. I'd like to work on some of those things like electronic filing and some of the uh, uh, criminal initiatives that uh, we we're looking at. There's study groups going on all the time. I don't always go to them. I'm spread kind of thin, but I have people at those meetings. So we're looking at a lot of those things, and we want to cooperate and do our part to put those initiatives into effect. Okay, thank you. Uh, anything further? And Mr. First, are there any final statements that you'd like to make? Well, the only one I... Um, uh, as I made to the executive, I said I would do my best to, res you know, make his decision and uh, recommending me uh, look good, and I would do everything to make him look good, and I offer you the same thing. Uh, my actions as clerk, I hope uh, to make uh, your judgment look good, and um, that's it. Uh, thank you. At this time, I believe a motion to refer um, this matter to the full body for con consideration of confirmation would be appropriate. Madam Chair, I'd like to uh, offer that motion to uh, refer for confirmation. Uh, is there a second? Excuse me, Madam, just to... Was it your motion was for consideration, not confirmation? Correct? Consideration of confirmation. Okay, very good. Thank you. So it's been moved by Mr. Jaman and seconded by um, uh, Ms. Conwell. Um, I d we are having a special meeting on Tuesday, the 15th, so we could put this matter on the agenda um, for the 15th. And that meeting will be at, will that be at 4? Yes, Madam President. Yeah, so it'll be a special meeting at four um, a, a week from today. So we'll be on the agenda for that. All right, uh, Madam Mr. Clerk, is there any Madam, discussion? Yes. Madam President, uh, I would just like to get clarification as to whether the uh, the motion is simply to put the matter on the agenda at a future meeting of the full council, or or is the motion that we recommend the confirmation of Gerald first to the full council. My understanding is that the motion is to consider to, to pass motion to pass this body to the full board for consideration for confirmation. So we will take a vote at that time on the confirmation. Any discussion on that, uh, Madam Madam President? Yes. Uh, I think this. Uh, this motion certainly is in order, but, uh, but I think it has kind of a neutral quality to it. I, I think that, uh, that normally the, uh, the purpose of, of a committee is to, uh, to make recommendations to the full council, and if we think, if we think that the, uh, the nomination should be confirmed, that we should recommend the same. You, that's what I think would be normal, but certainly, uh, Certainly, what's being uh, being proposed is 
is in order, although it's uh, less than a full-blown endorsement. Mr. Germana. Madam Chair, I guess it's it's all in uh, in how how you how you look at things. Um, you know, the the executive sends. He's interviewing. He's he's deciding who he wants us to confirm, and, and basically, we either confirm or deny. And so, the intent of my motion was to move this forward so that this council can can confirm what the executive um, has, has suggested. So, but at the same time, if there is not. <laughs> the, the vote's there. He's not going to be confirmed. Right. But, uh, you know, I I have a very good comfort level with Gerald First. I mean, there's been no scandals. He's hardworking. We've already had testimony how, uh, in, in comparison to other clerks, it, it all starts at the top. And, and this man, uh, I, I, I think... His character goes down to his employees, and that it's customer service, you know. And uh, so, to answer Mr. Miller, <laughs> I definitely want to confirm Gerald first uh, when when it comes to that vote. Ma Madam President, yes, I'm happy to vote for the motion as stated. I'm just stirring up general discussion about the role of committees. Mr. Shrine, yes, and and I think that. From a procedural standpoint, as we go forward with all these confirmations, to me, we have not followed that uh, that standard to which uh, Councilman Miller is, is suggesting, and I think that that's the purpose for having this as a committee of the whole. That if it's tantamount to the same same thing as, as our as our for, full council will be next week when we meet, and at that point in time, for all of these all three of the confirmations, at that point we'll be called accountable for our vote on all three of those, and. And to change that with any one of these, I think that would, would be sending a different message. I think that uh, it's very appropriate to say we want procedurally this to go forward. And then when we get to next week, um, I believe that, that there's a strong uh, sense for all three of these candidates, but I do not know uh, as to what might come up in the, next, in the week and what everybody's attitude. But that's the purpose for just going procedurally forward, to put this on the docket for next week and then, and then vote on it next week. All right, if there's no further, is there any further discussion? All right, Madam Clerk, we call the roll. Mr. Jones? Yes. Ms. Conley? Yes. Mr. Rogers? Yes. Ms. Simon? Yes. Mr. Greenspan? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Yes. Mr. Germana? Yes. Liger? Mr. Schron? Yes. Ms. Conwell? Yes. The motion carries. All right, motion carries. And we'll probably put this like early in the agenda so we can get you in and out of here. All right. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Mr. First. We appreciate your consideration. And we appreciate your years of service. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Uh, there being no other matters for consideration for this confirmation hearing, we will adjourn until 4 o'clock. We'll start our work session. Do we need a, do we need a motion to adjourn? Uh, Madam Chair, oh. I so move. All right, so second. move, second. All right, all in favor, aye. All right. Aye. 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 When we have our school committee meeting,